My dad planted the first batch of Christmas trees in uh, 1960. And that was planted right down the middle of uh, some strawberry rows. So he actually had 10 acres of strawberries and 80 acres of raspberries uh, going for a number of years. And then we just planted the trees right down the strawberry rows and picked strawberries for a few years while the trees were small. And uh, that was a pretty clever way to do things, I thought. He bought uh, the first 20, I think 28 acres, and then he added, uh, through the years, added other pieces of land that came up for sale. So the whole farm at this point is about 85 acres. Most of the farmers in this area were doing some sort of dairy. Uh, there was a, several barns on the farm, uh, and most of the dairies were about 20-acre dairies. Most of the farm is in Christmas trees, and we produce um, close to 50 acres here at the farm. The, the Christmas trees, when I clear field, I produce quite a bit of uh, waste material. And instead of burning that, like we did years ago, I, I wanted to try to use that material. So we grind it up, usually add some dairy waste from a local dairy farm, stir it, and produce some compost. I also, in the 80s, planted about eight acres in apples and Asian pears. I also have some ground that I've allocated towards vegetables. The uh, apples and the uh, vegetable ground is all certified organic. If sustainability means longevity, which is a part of any definition of sustainability, then definitely Steve is being sustainable because he is sustaining an operation that his, his uh, parents began and, and he has been successful by his own terms. I like the harvest. I like picking apples. It's usually uh, fairly quiet. A lot of times the crew wants a radio. It's uh, you're not listening to equipment running. Uh, um, yeah, it's a nice time of year. Uh, the weather's good, the sun on your back. Since we were field packing, don't really want to pack the apples wet. So it's nice to have them dried off a little bit. So sometimes first thing in the morning, sometimes we'll just do something else and wait till the sun dries the apples a little bit and then we'll just start picking. We just put our boxes, all our cardboard, into the uh, trucks and head out there with a the trailer and, and ladders and, and uh, the crew starts picking and usually there's one or two sorters. Uh, Mark or I or Graham or one of us uh, will be sorting apples into several different grades. Um, usually small, medium, large. Usually there's a grade of seconds. Uh, that have minor blemishes, the apple's fine, but uh, and then there's a, another grade of uh, cider apples. Yeah, and then we just uh, do that most of the day and then uh, bring the apples up and put them in the cooler here. His son Graham has just come into the operation, and so here's a third generation. Again, there's a marker of a sustainable farm. How many kids want to come in, to, and it's hard work, believe me, I've been on Steve's farm and I, and I know how hard they work and yet Graham has decided to follow in his dad's footsteps. And to me, that's the ultimate marker of sustainability when you get family members that are willing to come back into that operation. Normally they'll get stored in a cooler for about a month, sometimes a little longer, before they're sold. After that, uh, I try to get them sold uh, wholesale. And whatever apples don't get packed into boxes, usually cider apples, we'll pick a day that's either raining or it's just time to make get some apples, cider apples out of our way or have, have product here. Uh, we'll make cider usually about once a week. apple that ripens in cool weather usually keeps fairly well. So I will keep the Melrose and the Mutsus and the John Golds uh, and the Kings till at least Christmas. Uh, the Melrose will last quite a bit longer. They're really the best keeper of all apples. Thank you.
you, Karen. You're welcome. We sell quite a bit of cider with Christmas trees, and I sell quite a few apples with Christmas trees. So it's kind of a, uh, as people are in here with a Christmas, getting a Christmas tree, we'll pick up either a box of apples or at least a few apples, and uh, you know, a uh, jug of cider is a big deal for me there. I really enjoy watching families come out uh, to pick their tree. Uh, the kids definitely get extremely excited, although adults, I've seen uh, people that are definitely into uh, decorating their Christmas tree and they all spend all day long out there searching for the perfect tree for themselves. People pull in the driveway, I give them the spiel of how much a tree is, give them a saw, and tell them to go out there and have fun. After they go out and find their tree, they come back, they drive back up here to the barn area. Somebody measures their tree up and they get charged. And I usually have a number of different products uh, from other either farmers or different growers or processors uh, that are around here, uh, local product only. The Reese, uh, the apples, the Asian pears, um, uh, syrups, honey from another uh, local farm here. And then they're about ready to go off and uh, decorate their tree and have fun in their, in their home. And hopefully after Christmas, when everything's done, if they don't have a use for that tree, they'll bring it back for recycling. My dad was one of the first to explore Christmas trees. I think that was in 1960. So that was our first uh, crop of Christmas trees. It worked well. Uh, then we were ready to plant uh, about another 40 acres, I believe that he, uh, over the time, he'd picked up other pieces of property, and uh, he died. Amazing. Steve was left with all those uh, trees unplanted, and uh, some of the ground hadn't even been finished uh, plowing yet, so uh, I went down with our tractor and, and finished plowing uh, one of the fields, and then we hooked up a tree planter on the back of our tractor, and uh, and uh, there was there was some ladies and, and some of the Boy Scout troops that took turns planting trees, and we got uh, got all those trees planted. Seemed like in record time. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. I, I keep thinking of that time uh, where you know it was a rough time when your father dies, and I was 16 at the time and my mother was devastated. And, and to all the neighbors and, and people from all over the community came and helped plant these trees. The hour I first believed. 40 acres is a lot of trees to plant. Usually you can fit about, oh, 12 to 1,500 trees per acre. So that's the number of trees. Blah.